What's up fam? I'm Drew from Borrow Lenses and today we're dialing it down back to basics and talking 24, 30, and 60. And while I traded numbers for words a long time ago after realizing I could no longer math so good, I'll make an exception for the sake of giving an incomplete but hopefully simple and practical breakdown of the most commonly used video frame rates. If you're new to video or making the jump as a still shooter, understanding how to select your frame rate is a great jumping off point when it comes to dialing in your settings. So what is frame rate? Well, what is video? What am I even doing with my like, whoops, too far? What is video? It's a collection of still images played in sequence to the point where our brains interpret it as motion. Your frame rate is therefore simply the amount of images taken and played back every second to ensure this motion is realistic and smooth, hence the term frames per second, commonly abbreviated as FPS or just often P. Not enough frames per second and you end up with choppy separate stills, no different than a photographer shooting in burst capture. Too many and things start to look off and unnatural. The truth is, difference in frame rates can be tough to explain but you know it when you see it. While the three rates we'll discuss are the so-called sweet spots for smooth, natural motion, let's make one thing clear right away. No frame rate is better than another. Selecting a frame rate is a style choice. You choose one over another because you want your video to look a certain way. And that's why this is a good place to start learning. Frame rate is one of the few settings where you are totally in control, as opposed to basing it off of another setting. I like to start the comparison with 30 frames per second because this is about as close to what your eye is taking in in normal everyday life. 30 images a second provides enough detail and playback speed to look natural and therefore it gives us a reference point to how something will look even if you're brand new to video. Because it's the most natural and lifelike, 30 frames per second is often viewed as the television frame rate and that's for good reason. This frame rate was introduced with the invention of broadcast television due to technical limitations of the day and needing video to line up with the refresh rates of AC line frequencies. No longer relevant, but like many things in video, this workaround for a technical limitation led to a certain style that remains today. Think news or reality TV. These are shot in this frame rate because the intent is to be as real and lifelike as possible, at least in terms of image quality. Now, because 30 frames a second is associated with this type of programming, shooting in 30p kind of gets a bad rap nowadays and is viewed as less interesting or even unprofessional. This has been exacerbated by the fact our phones default to shooting in 30 fps. And since we consume so many videos shot on our phones, it's just perceived as the norm. So those looking for a more professional video want something that looks different even if they don't know why or how that's achieved. So on to 24 frames a second, but I should stop and offer a disclaimer before film school students get mad at me. When you shoot in 30 FPS, you're really shooting in 29.97. 30p is obsolete today. Most people who say they shoot in 24p, but whose videos are intended for online viewing are really shooting in 23.98 FPS. 24p is only truly utilized in film and when shown in movie theaters, but also, dude, for the sake of conversation, it's fine. You should know what the intended viewing platform is to make the final decision, but shooting in 23.98 is a safe bet and you can go ahead and refer to it as 24. Just be careful who you're discussing this with because yes, they are technically different. So 24 frames per second. Fewer frames means slightly not as sharp as 30, but without compromising the image. More motion blur is produced as a result of the missing frames, and while that kind of sounds like a bad thing, it actually produces a very aesthetically pleasing effect. You can tell it just doesn't look as true to life as 30. The movement seems more dramatic for some reason. Dare I say, cinematic? Well, yeah. For those wondering what the frame rate of movies is, 24 has been the film standard since 1926. And while film frame rates varied quite a bit prior to that, the standard was set not because it brought a sense of wonder and Hollywood movie magic to the screen better than any other rate, it was because that's what worked best when movies started including sound and needed to be synchronized to the moving pictures, kid. Again, 
this technical limitation stuck around and led to the creation of a particular style. Shooting in 24 FPS gives you a certain look, that's true, but it's not actually more dramatic or more professional than 30 FPS. But because we associate that look with movies and the best shot TV shows, that's exactly how it's viewed and why it's pretty much become the standard for most professional client work. Finally, let's talk about 60 frames per second, or yeah, actually 59.96. You would want to shoot in this frame rate for two reasons. The first being that you're shooting fast action. Now some things happen so fast that shooting in 24 or 30p misses too much detail or produces motion blur that goes from pleasing to distracting. If you want to maintain that lifelike look, you'll need to shoot at a higher frame rate. While the action you're capturing should certainly be factored into choosing your frame rate, don't forget that it's still a style choice. You could shoot fast action at a higher frame rate to maintain a sense of realness, but you can also shoot that same action at 24p to make it seem more dramatic. This is a commonly used tool when you want to focus on a certain narrative or story as opposed to just showing something that happened. The second reason for shooting in this higher frame rate is because it's the entry point slow motion frame rate. If you were to shoot at 24 but then slow the footage down by 50%, you're essentially watching 12 frames per second, and we're back to our original problem discussed in this video. There's not enough images for us to perceive smooth motion. If you shoot at 60 frames per second though, and slow it down to 24 frames per second, you have more than enough images captured to fill in those gaps and produce smooth, slow motion footage. You make sure you're familiar with your camera's capabilities when shooting in higher frame rates. A lot of cameras still struggle with maintaining consistent quality when it comes to shooting around 60, and as a result, could force you to shoot in a lower resolution or even disable functions like autofocus. It's also going to always eat up a lot more room on your memory card, so plan accordingly. So hopefully this video gave you an idea of why you'd shoot in a particular frame rate. There's a lot we didn't cover, like what's the difference between progressive versus interlace? The, the answer is science, of course. And we only covered the most common NTSC video frame rates and conveniently ignored PAL rates that much of the rest of the world uses. How very American of us. Look, the idea here was to simply provide enough detail for this to be a jumping off point for new videographers. From here, it's all about trial and error. Go out and find your style. Shoot in 24, 30, 60, continue to experiment. Because as we've seen here, technical or budgetary limitations and workarounds don't have to hold you back when it comes to video. In fact, they may just help you create a new standard. So let us know how you're doing in the comments below. We'll be back with more basics episodes soon. And at any rate, check us out at borrowlenses.com for all your photo and video needs. That last line was pretty clever.